I'm Chris and this is my 1978 Datsun 280Z and we're going to be using this car to film a short series automotive wiring from scratch. So we got the engine all ready to be started and I'm going through the factory wiring on the car. And we're going to be wiring these circuits up as simple as possible. There might be some gaps because I don't know what kind of car you're working on, what kind of ignition switch you have, what kind of alternator you have, what kind of ignition you have. But in this video we're wiring up the starter motor circuit 100%. We're going to wrap it in a certain color electrical tape. Part two, we're going to be doing the charging system and wiring up the alternator, everything to work perfect. Part three, the ignition system. So part four, we're going to add a fuse box and electric fuel pump. This is a carbureted engine, but it doesn't matter if your engine is fuel injection, you're going to isolate the power wires. And in part four, that little fuse box we run, you would just power your fuel injection on the fuse box. In my case, I'm running it temporary to get the engine started while I'm going through the factory wiring. If you were gonna run this permanent, you would just fuse accordingly. I'll put little pieces of tape where to fuse. And after you see the different circuits ran in the different color tapes, it'll help you understand how to diagnose and troubleshoot your car that you're working on. So notice on this starter, we only have three positions to wire to. This is where the battery is connected and this is where the rest of the car is gonna get power from right here. This is our starter solenoid. It's gonna come from our ignition switch S position. We only have three points ignition older cars that use coils and ballast resistors will have another terminal a fourth terminal either i or r we do not have it on this starter so let's go to put the starter in notice all this stuff just threads in by hand beautiful so on your starter solenoid whether it's external on a firewall or attached to the starter it doesn't matter you're going to have two studs on there on this starter the bottom stud goes to the starter motor brushes. It'll have like a little rubber thing, a seal going into the starter. We don't mess with that in any way. And then the other big stud on the starter relay goes to the battery. Okay, so this is your two American wire gauge thick cable. It's black on this car, but typically red is the idea. So the starter has a bolt to the engine bell housing and that's where you're gonna run your negative battery cable or your ground. If you don't understand ground, Go watch my automotive grounding and explain video before you even start trying to mess with this stuff. So on this starter, we have the S position. It's a smaller lug, and this is going to go to our ignition switch. So these ignition switches can be all shapes and all forms. The one on this car is round. It doesn't matter. You're going to look for these positions S and B. You're going to have to look close. You might have to go on the internet and figure it out, but you're going to have an S and a B position. That's for battery, and that's for starter. So we need to get power to B. So what they started doing is that same wire that feeds the starter solenoid, the big two gauge, they all run a 10 gauge wire right there that powers everything inside the car. So on ours, we're gonna run a 10 gauge wire. So if you were gonna run this permanent, you could fuse it with a fuse link or a fuse of your choice. And that wire is gonna go straight to B. So this is just for right now, whenever we start adding circuits to the car, this wire right here is going to get branched off. We'll look at that in future videos. But as of right now, that's all you do. Fuse it if you want to. 10 gauge. So I am a GM Chevrolet guy. So if I'm wiring stuff up like this, I always use the old GM colors. So we're using a purple 10 gauge wire. And if you were going to fuse this wire, you would fuse it coming off of the starter right there. So even though I know all this stuff, I still draw this before I go out on the car. This is for the car we're working on right now. And it gives you an idea on all the stuff you're going to need when you go to the parts store. Keep in mind, different end holes on the terminals. Are you going to have to buy some of this, all of this? I go on my junk pile first. I don't waste money unless I have to. Let's go wire this on the car. This is our ignition switch. Keep in mind that you don't want terminals touching each other if you wire it up like this. So you can see B and then S. So this wire is going to go in here. Practice fit all this stuff. And then our battery covered is going to go right there. Two of these won't fit in there. See, they don't want to fit in there. Anyway, both of these wires are 10 gauge wire. You can see 10 gauge. The worst enemy of the crimped end is moisture getting in there and corroding it. So you want to seal this off the best you can. Nice crimp on there. So this side's going to the starter, so make sure the hole's big enough for the starter stud. Same thing. Oh, tight fit. So these were all mangled. I cut them down 
and clean the wire real good. All right, the gold ones are kind of a pain in the butt to squish them down for the negative terminal, but they look good. So these appear to be the factory cables inspect the crimp. Everything looks good on both of these. The bigger hole is our ground to our engine block. This is not the right battery for this car and the positive is right here. So that's kind of sketchy. So I'm gonna route this cable where it can't touch. So you really have to understand what you're doing. This is a battery that's fully charged. This stuff can arc and spark. So hook the battery up last. We're just kind of fitting everything for the first time. So on our starter, we only have three positions. This bottom one goes to the starter motor right here. All right, positive battery cable. Clean these off really, really good. So then our purple and red wire, we're gonna run these together. This one is gonna go on the same lug, connected straight to the battery. And this goes on your starter solenoid S position. Go ahead and put these through the firewall together. Purple wire to S solenoid, just like that. So this harness is gonna be wrapped with yellow tape only. So for the ground, we're gonna go ahead and take the starter bolt off and ground it right there. So the starter was painted, so we're gonna to have to clean that area off really good. And I can't get that in there. I'm gonna hook the battery up last. Do not hook anything up right now. So this is the ignition switch for this car. We're gonna go ahead and stick it back on the column. But on this car, it just screws down right there. Oh, B. All right. And then S. Just like that. Ready to hook everything up. Make sure everything is going to the right place. So we're just gonna bump the starter a little bit because I don't have plugs in there and it'll free spin super fast. Okay, let's crank it up. So I'm just gonna bump the starter. It's like ring, 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 ring. So you see how that's done in there? Those are representing the fuse links. That's how they look on GM cars. So if you wanted to fuse, fuse those two wires right there. And you see how we're wrapping the starter motor circuit in yellow tape. So then when we add the charging system, wiring in the next video we'll do it in a different color and you're going to see how they are all in there next to each other but completely separate so you see how simple the starter motor circuit is when we flick that button it worked the first time and it worked perfect so the next video we're going to either wire up the charging system or the ignition system it doesn't really matter but we're on the journey to get this thing started in the next few days all right well i hope you see how simple that is and if you enjoy please like and subscribe and thanks for watching